YouTube. Welcome to Geek. Shh. So now that third party storage options are readily available, it's time to shift our focus onto hubs for the M4 Mac Mini. Now, a few have been released thus far, but this is the one that caught my attention from the very beginning. The Oracle Mini Link SSD Docking Station. So in the box, you get the Mini Link, which we'll get to in a minute. Your adapter for whichever country you're in, as well as the power brick. Now, during testing, I did see this pull up to 16 watts at peak and 11.5 watts at idle. You also get a screwdriver, which is magnetic, and that's always a good thing to see. A one foot USB 4 cable, as well as a three foot USB 4 cable, two heat sinks, two screws, and two one millimeter generic thermal pads. And last but not least, a manual that covers all their M4 Mac Mini products. So back to the Mini Link. It looks great, taking on the same form factor as the M4 Mac Mini, but with alloy for the top metal and plastic for the bottom. Now, please be advised, there's two different versions of the Mini Link, and this is the 40 gigabit per second version, which is the M47P. Now, taking a look at the ports, it has the fastest SD and TF ports available, which is 4.0. It has two USB 3.2 ports in the front, giving you access to 10 gigabits per second each. On the back, we have a 12 volt DC power port for connecting it to the power brick, another USB 3.2 port, and a USB-C port to connect it to your M4 Mac Mini. On the bottom, we have two NVMe slots. The Time One slot provides 10 gigabits per second up to 1500 megabytes. And the Time Two slot gives you 40 gigabits per second for up to 3000 megabytes. So weight wise, it comes in about 274 grams and the dimensions are the same as the M4 Mac Mini. The only difference is the height is a little bit under one inch, but if you include the bottom, then it comes in around 1.1 inches. All right, to get things started, we're gonna go ahead and take our NVMe drive. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape from the thermal pad. Then we're gonna lay that thermal pad onto the heat sink. And then we're gonna take that NVMe drive and slide it in between the grooves to the very end. Then we're gonna take something sharp to remove the tape covering the screw hole. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the NVMe drive. Now, one comment I saw people writing was the magnets wasn't strong enough, but I have not found that to be the case. The bottom plate has not fallen off not one time since I started using this thing. Now, one thing about this hub, whether it's on top of your M4 Mac Mini or on the bottom of your M4 Mac Mini, you will be aesthetically pleased. Now, there's something very crucial that we're gonna have to address later on in the video, but for now, let's run some speed tests. All right guys, so let's do a quick speed test on the drives. So first we're gonna test out Sheila, which is the 40 gigabit per second drive that's in there. And let's go ahead and get it started. All right, so we're looking at a little under 3000 read and write, which is what you're supposed to be getting. Let's switch to the five gig test, same drive and you're getting basically the same speed, which is pretty good. So that's pretty good speeds right there. All right, so now let's switch to the 10 gigabit per second drive, which would be Big Sur. Let's uh, switch that to the one gig test. All right, and you're getting a little over 1500 read and write, which is what you're supposed to be getting as well on that particular drive. All right, and let's go ahead and switch to five gig test. And you're getting the same speeds, which is pretty impressive. Usually when you go from a one gig test to a five gig test, it dips in speed, but not with these drives, you know, not with this uh, particular hub. All right, guys. So what we're going to do right now is to do, we're going to transfer this file, which is a folder with one projects and it's 300 gigs 
we're going to transfer it from the 10 gigabits per second over to the 40 gigabits per second and we're going to monitor how long it takes but it's really just to check the temperature and see how well it handles itself now let me open up this uh app right here first let me do a a test of what the temperature is we're over 34 to basically around 31 to 36 celsius on it all right so now i'm going to open up drive dx and this is something that can monitor the temperatures of the drive so let me go ahead and get that and we're going to transfer that over as of right now you can see the current temperature is 44 degrees on the m1 and on this the next one it's 40 degrees all right so let's go ahead and transfer this over and now i am going to test the speed but it's not really about that so there's 300 gigs Perfect. and we're going to see how well it does takes about three minutes let me go ahead and refresh this we jumped up to 50 here and 54 over here all right let me give it a few more seconds and then i'll go ahead and refresh it again and then we're going to check in with the temperature all right, let me go ahead and refresh it again. All right, so it definitely jumped up. Let me check the temperature with the infrared. All right, so we're still like, we just jumped up to the 40s. Okay, so we just jumped up to the 40s. Let me refresh, the, refresh this again. So 54, we're at on M1 and 59. We jumped up to 59 right here. So as you can see, it does a great job of dissipating the heat, taking that hot air and then pushing it out the back. It does a great job of that. Let me go ahead and refresh one more time. All right, now we jumped up to 62 over here and 56 up here. Now we're at the 40s on the back using the infrared. We're at the 40s. And less than a minute to go. Let me refresh it one more time. We're at 57 on there. And 64 degrees Celsius here. Okay, so it's definitely getting hot. I can feel the warmth. So let me check it again. 45 degrees. So it's definitely doing a good job of keeping this area cool, keeping the everything cool over here. Let me refresh it one more time. It's about to be finished. All right five more seconds and the cash the cash ended that's why it's only it dropped down on the megabytes for the data read and the data written the cash finish so it definitely does a good job of taking that heat and pull, pulling that heat out with the fan it definitely does a good job of doing that and I definitely could feel that it's warm and let me uh let me flip it over see 
see what so these this one is in the 30s so it's doing a good job of taking that heat that the nvmes are producing and pulling it and pushing it out the back so one major concern to some m4 mac mini users that's looking to purchase hubs for the m4 mac mini has to be wi-fi speeds due to the design of the m4 mac mini some hubs negatively affect the speeds you receive from your router so i went ahead and conducted five speed tests each in four different categories and it went as follows the first is with the ethernet cable plugged in and the wi-fi off with the hub removed I got an average of 927 megabits down and 924 megabits up. Next was the Wi-Fi test with the ethernet cable unplugged and the hub removed. My average was 272 megabits down and 309 megabits up. Next was the Wi-Fi test with the ethernet cable unplugged and the Oracle hub sitting on top of the M4 Mac mini. I got an average of 184 megabits down and 296 up. Now the next and final one was a Wi-Fi test with the ethernet cable unplugged and the Oracle hub sitting underneath the M4 Mac mini. And the results was inoperable. So this is a real thing. And a lot of people contribute these Wi-Fi issues as being a design flaw from Apple. Because if you open up any M4 Mac mini, literally the first thing you see is the Wi-Fi. But personally, I refute these claims. Apple did not design the M4 Mac mini with third party hub manufacturers in mind. If you take any M4 Mac mini and place it on a desk, whether it's a wood desk, a glass desk, or hell, even a granite countertop, you will not run into any of these Wi-Fi issues. So personally, I do not think it is a problem with the M4 Mac mini, but rather a design flaw from the hub manufacturers. So now we have to address the elephant in the room. A few weeks ago, I did a quick review of the Oracle mini mate, which is another enclosure for the M4 Mac mini. And in that review, I blasted Oracle for having a very loud fan. Now, when it comes to the mini link, this was available for presale over two months ago. And people that purchased it early end up leaving reviews and complaining about the fan noise immediately. So much so that Oracle decided to finally address the problem and claim that they fixed the issue. When I saw that, I immediately reached out to them and I was reassured that they actually did indeed fix the issue before I went ahead and placed my order. Now my office at its quietest is around 29 dB. So let's go ahead and power this on and let's see what happens. So yes, the fan is indeed loud, but it's an improvement. Let me explain. When it came to the Oracle Mini Mate or the Oracle pre-sale Mini Links, those not only had a loud fan, but also a high pitched whining noise attached to it as well. With this one, they got rid of that high pitch, that whining noise, and all you have to deal with is a loud fan. Nonetheless, I basically think what Oracle is letting the world know right now is that if you buy any of our products, you're just going to have to deal with a loud fan. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> now, after using the Oracle Mini Link for a week, this is what I think about it. In terms of functionality, it gives you access to three USB 3.2 ports, providing you with 10 gigabits per second each. Not only a SD card reader, but also a micro SD card reader with the fastest speeds available for those two being 4.0. Two NVMe slots on the bottom, one giving you 10 gigabits per second and the other giving you four gigabits per second, respectively. A power button that allows you to turn it on and off at a whim. 
and a power brick, which allows you to provide power independently rather than relying on the M4 Mac Mini. And the reason that is so significant, if you ever took two USB 4 enclosures or two Thunderbolt enclosures and try to plug it into the back of your M4 Mac Mini, you will be greeted with a message from Mac OS basically letting you know that the M4 Mac Mini cannot provide power to both of them simultaneously. With this Oracle Mini Link, being that it has its own independent power source, you can combine it with another Thunderbolt or USB 4 enclosure and use them both in tandem. This is something that none of the other hubs will ever allow you to do because they rely on the M4 Mac Mini for their power. So when you add all of that together, you have to give this Oracle Mini Link a 10 out of 10 in terms of functionality. Now, what immediately reduces that rating has to be the fan noise. But speaking of the fan, this is what I have to say about it after using it for a week. Once the eggs start cracking in the pants, air fryers start turning on, doors start opening and closing, showers are running, kids running through the house making all type of noise, Stephen A on the TV yelling about the Knicks, central air start turning on, your girl on the phone gossiping, the foreigners outside manicuring the lawn, you're on YouTube listening to me rant. Once your day gets started, you will no longer hear that fan noise, I promise you. It's not something that you're going to be you will totally ignore it at that point. But on the flip side of that, when it start getting 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, when the house start getting real quiet, trust me, you will hear that fan noise. Now, don't get it twisted. It's not something that you're going to hear throughout your whole house. It's not that loud. It's just something that you will hear when you're in the vicinity of it. But like I said, you will hear it. Now, on the flip side, of again, I do have a Lasco fan in my office that I turn on during the summertime months and I leave on for the entire summer. Now, we had two very warm days where I'm at back to back and I end up turning on that fan. And I'm going to promise you, once I turn on that fan in the same office that this mini link is in, it totally drowned that mini link out. I no longer heard it. So the reason I'm hearing it a lot is because it's not hot yet. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But when it starts getting hot, this is not something I'm going to be hearing at all to be honest with you. So to sum everything up, every one review of the Oracle Mini Link has to be based on their living situation. Because in terms of functionality, there is no competition for the Oracle Mini Link, hands down. But it's just that fan factor. It just depends what your house sounds like throughout the day and the night. And please never forget, you always have the ability to hit that power button and shut it off completely. All right, guys, so that's the review of the Oracle Mini Link. Now, there's other hubs out there. One particular comes from RayQ. Now, RayQ has the 10 gigabit per second, 40 gigabit per second, and an 80 gigabit per second version of their hubs. Perfect. Now, I ordered the 40 gigabit per second version, and I end up canceling it because RayQ refused to respond to any of the messages I sent out to them about my hub. Now that I pay for with my hard earned money. And then I verified with other people out there in the world that they had this same issue. RayQ refuses to do customer service. So I end up canceling it through PayPal and getting my money back, etc., etc. Right. So out of nowhere, I get a message that RayQ shipped it to me. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Even though I already got my refund, they sh decided to ship it to me. And this is their own fault because they refuse to respond to messages so anyway what i'm gonna do when i finally receive it is i'm going to go ahead and do a review of it so think about it as a review unit that they sent out to me at that point so i'm gonna go ahead and review it and look out for that within the next week or two all right so other than that oracle if you're listening out there if you guys could just figure out a way to fix the fan noise i promise you at that point you will have had received all the infinity stones. All it would take at that point is to snap your fingers and to get to get rid of RayQ, Satoshi, and any other hub manufacturers out there for the M4 Mac Mini at that point, if y'all just figure that out. It is what it is, man. Nonetheless, this is your boy DeMarco Payne for Geek Shh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the NVMe speeds attached to your M4 Mac Mini be high and your fan noise below.